from Vegas style red light district nightlife to call red light district okay Amsterdam what's up guys it's Dwayne back again for another video back in for the reaction and today's a great wonderful incredible day because it's a Germany day the best thing to do in Hamburg without further ado let's get into this reaction let's go how much could you really tell me about Hamburg not much. If you're like me, then before setting out to this criminally overlooked city, you might have only known it as one of the big German cities that isn't Berlin. So pretty. I'm here to tell you that it's so, so much more than that, and I can't believe I went so long without visiting. Hamburg. Guys, the reason why I'm doing Hamburg, just to pause him while he's saying Hamburg, is because <laughs> after my Cologne video, some people in the comment section were a bit like Cologne it's not the best city how can Cologne be the best city it's nowhere near the best city so <laughs> I've listened um a lot of people in the comment section said actually Hamburg is the is a is a better city um Hamburg seems to be very popular so I'm like okay let me check this one out all right I didn't say Cologne was the best city I asked you whether Cologne is the best city, and you've told me no. Well, the majority of people told me no. Some people love it. But um, yeah, and also Platz Deutsch. Yes, I know it's not from Cologne. I think this is more people in Hamburg speak that, but mostly the elderly people, if I'm correct in the comment section. That's what you guys said. So yeah, I'm looking forward to learning about Hamburg. Already, even from those two shots, I'm like, hmm, okay. It's giving very British vibes in terms of architecture, but the, the waterways are incredible. Really nice big city. To say it's not a capital, um, it looks great. Kind of reminds me of Birmingham, which is our second biggest city as well. Let's continue. It's a city on the water, and as Europe's third largest port, Hamburg is known as Germany's gateway to the world. The River Elbe is the source, the main artery that brings Hamburg to life. Wow. From river tours pacing the canals of the Speicherstadt to the container ships loaded by crane in the harbour, trade and prosperity brought to Hamburg by the River Elbe shaped the city from its foundations. So it's like a port city then. It's a, like you said, a gateway to the world. So it's, so actually not Birmingham, it's a bit more like uh, Liverpool. Liverpool in the a, in a sense of, of being a port city. Mm. Nice, I like it. I like anywhere that has lots of water. So, it's a tick so far. But not everything great about Hamburg sails down the Elbe. From skyscraping concert halls I love that building. to miniature model railways. From Vegas style red light. Wait, what? <laughs> Mid miniature model railways. Okay. To miniature model. That's interesting. I thought that when he, when he was panning up, I thought it was a real city. Uh, real. <laughs> I thought it was real, but it's not. Railways from Vegas style red light district nightlife to call red light district. Okay, Amsterdam. Interesting. Okay, Hamburg is Hamburg is uh, interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Underground gourmet burger restaurants. Hamburg is a modern global city with a rich history and culture, and something to fascinate everyone. That's very pretty, guys. Yeah, I love this. I don't know where this is, this inter in intersection, but this is very pretty architecture. Um, very European. Very um, kind of Italian, kind of almost. Really like that. We're Jake and Tom from Holiday Extras, and this is our Hamburg adventure. Okay. On our first day, we're going to see the sights the way Hamburg sells them, the full-blown tourist experience. Visiting Hamburg's most highly recommended attractions to let you know if they really make the cut. On day two, we loosen up a little, find our own way and indulge our flights of fancy, doing Hamburg the way we wanted. Indulge ourselves. We wanted to find out what Hamburg had to offer that was perfect for Jake and Tom. The two days of our trip turned out to be so different, and I hope you find what we learned useful. We learned a lot, but what surprised me most about this trip was how fun it can be to just chase my own curiosity and to break my own expectations. 
this guy speak. He's got a very nice voice, number one, and just very good at setting the scene. Hmm, I might watch more of their videos. Um, yeah, go check out their channel because what's the name? Holiday Extra Travel Guides. After you watch my video, don't click away. Then you, you should subscribe to them because the nar narration is very good. Our adventure started at Gatwick Airport, filling up on a lovely free Gatwick. breakfast in the lounge to prepare us for the journey ahead. How long was the flight? Outside From the Hamburg Airport, it was easy. We'd booked ourselves a transfer in advance. So before long, we were at our accommodation. Rest wait, 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 wait. So they got on a plane and didn't tell me how long the flight was. Come on, guys. Um, but yeah, even the little clips of the streets, it looks very nice. Up before our Hamburg trip truly began. Okay. We kicked off day one the way any good day starts, with a coffee. There are plenty of places along the river to grab a pretty great coffee, and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to try my first ever big pretzel. Which, by the way, was brilliant. So now we were charged up with coffee and pretzels, it was time to move on. In central Hamburg, the River Elbe divides off into smaller, narrower canals that interlace a beautiful district called the Speicherstadt, which means city of warehouses. So we've made it and we're here in the Speicherstadt, which I hope I haven't butchered, honestly, because I listened to Google Translate say it like 50 times. The Speicherstadt. I'm glad I'm not the only one that listens to Google Translate to try and get something right. <laughs> I, I listen to it as well and try and like emulate what they're saying. That is the largest warehouse district in the world. Ignore me, it's actually the largest warehouse district in the world where the buildings stand on timber pile foundations. Oh. Fun fact, in this case, they're made of oak, which makes it a big tourist attraction, and it consistently comes up as one of the most recommended places to visit in Hamburg. Now, having been here ourselves, totally agree with that. It's beautiful, you have lovely views of the river, it's really nice to walk around, lots of places to grab a coffee and just just waste some time, you know? And there's lots of other attractions that are based here as well because it's so popular with tourists, so it's definitely somewhere you should have on your list. I'll check it out. Some of the most picturesque places in the city are around the Speicherstadt, and most city and harbour tours will go through here. That's pretty incredible, just the way that these buildings are just like posted on the water like that is 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 pretty unique in in terms of like european cities i haven't seen many that are like this um yeah really really incredible how's the smell because that's that always comes to play i don't know like cities that have a lot of canal ways or river 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 ways or there's a lot of water smell sewage can sometimes be a problem is it, does it smell okay? Does it smell okay? Uh, that's, that's what I want to know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments section. Although we could have easily wandered back and forth over the canal bridges all morning, sipping coffee and admiring the architecture, it was time to move on. And we had a little place in mind. So this next place calls itself one of the epicenters of Hamburg tourism bold claim and we're gonna go see what we think about it for ourselves it's called miniature wonderland or as far as I can tell oh, in the German written name city. Minital Wonderland let's go find out miniature wonderland is located in the Speicherstadt and was founded 18 years ago by twin brothers Frederick and Gerrit Braun it's billed as a okay. model railway attraction but when you get in you'll see it's so much more than that there are 1300 trains in the exhibit over 100,000 oh moving vehicles <laughs> and 400,000 human figurines. Who, who, <laughs> who has the time to create all that? That's so cool. Train tracks weave through the walls, up the stairs and around the exquisitely detailed dioramas that oh fill God, the building. The exhibit also runs on a simulated day and night cycle that lasts around 15 minutes. So you can okay. see what every diorama looks like after the sun goes down. There are recreations of the city of Hamburg, the Alps, America, Switzerland, and so much more. Wow. When I was looking for the most popular things to do in Hamburg, the miniature wonderland was everywhere. But at first I was a bit skeptical, but now I'm so glad that I went. 
<laughs> so we're on our way out of the uh, miniature wonderland and I've got to say I actually really loved it. Um, I was kind of into like miniatures and stuff when I was a kid so it really sort of, it really did it for me and I think even though it was obviously like a really really touristy thing to do um, and there, there's not a whole lot to do other than walk around the exhibits, they were actually really good. Miniature is a bit of a misleading name I think because it's huge in there and so are the models and yeah I really recommend that you do it especially if you've got kids and you're visiting Hamburg with them because they're gonna love it. You'll find the Hamburg dungeon. I'll go I'm a big kid so I will definitely go and check out the exhibit. Right not? next door which is also pretty popular if you love live horror shows so you should definitely take a look in there too. While the sun was still high in the sky we wanted to float the idea of seeing the city from a new perspective. So Hamburg is known as a port city. It's the third largest port in Europe. So we were thinking, what better way is there to see Hamburg than a lovely river tour? We purchased the tickets for our river tour at the ticket store Hafen City, which is only a short walk away from the miniature wonderland. River tours are a staple of Hamburg tourism and on a beautiful day like it was, it's a wonderful way to squeeze in a city full of sights in just a few hours. Absolutely. Most tours will take you through either the warehouse district or the commercial harbour, which is of course still in use today. But we booked a two hour tour that covered both. Seeing the Spreihestadt from the water is unmissable, but my favourite part was definitely the harbour. The tour boats take you up close to some indescribably huge shipping container cranes and cargo ships, which make you feel tiny by comparison. Very industrial. Hamburg's got that kind of, that kind of, I don't know, like, like, I've seen, I've, well, we haven't seen all of it yet. We've only seen like a small part, but at the beginning they were showing some clips of some really beautiful streets as well. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm getting this juxtaposition of like really industrial, rustic, port city. Then you have like, from what I've seen at the beginning, really pretty, very like cafe, very like chilled vibes I'm, I'm liking it so far i'm liking it so far because i did say in one of the other videos that i like cities that are a bit rough around the edges but have also um have like lively nightlife not not too crazy but lively but then also there's that relaxed nature where you can go to a restaurant and have something nice and go to a cafe and like you can, is there a bit of nature that needs, I need to see some green. I haven't seen any green yet. I do like cities that have parks. So that's my only other criteria as well, but we'll continue watching. So far, I'm liking what I see. I like water as well, so yeah. It was a unique experience that I wouldn't have been able to enjoy without booking a tour, and I can't recommend it enough. Some boats are fully accessible, but we'd recommend asking when booking your ticket just in case. Our next stop was visible in the cityscape from nearly everywhere in Hamburg, even the river tour, and we couldn't wait to see it up close. St. Michael's Church, often simply referred to as wow. Mikkel, is the most That's pretty. And what's pretty about that is the two-tone, I don't know if it's supposed to be two-tone, I'm guessing it is, but I just love that kind of I don't know what is colour you would call it, what copperish slash I don't know concrete ish I don't even know what it's made out of but I just like the two tone colour of this church very unique looking pretty famous church in the city and also the largest seating 2,500 people the steeple is 132 meters high and is such a prominent part of the Hamburg skyline that historically it was used by sailors to navigate the River Elbe. Okay. But the best part, the steeple contains an awesome viewing platform with 360 degree views of the city. Beautiful. I love that like the tallest building is an old church rather than, because normally big cities, their tallest building are new structures, new sky, sky, ugh, sky, skyscape, sky, I can't speak today, skyscrapers. Normally um, in cities, that's what's like the biggest building, but I love these older cities, these historical cities that have these old structures that have 
<laughs> huge. You know, like Paris also is a massive Eiffel Tower just jutting out of like the city and it's an old structure. I just love that. Um, and yeah, Hamburg has this. How's it going on? We could see everywhere we'd been that day. The Speicherstadt, the miniature wonderland, the harbour, and the low afternoon sun was the icing on the cake of an already spectacular view. There is an elevator up to the viewing platform, so we decided to take the easy way up and then walk back down. And we didn't regret it. The body of the church tower is fascinating and the descent only took a few minutes. So, we can frame some really pretty shots of this church, but it's hard to give you a sense of scale of how really massive it is. And when you're up there on the platform, it's insane. And you can see everywhere in Hamburg, which makes sense because you can basically see the church from everywhere else in Hamburg as well. And I really loved it. I really loved it. It was great. We've come at a really good time of day. And so the sun hit everything in just that right way. Yeah, I've got to recommend it. It must be quite a good meeting spot, right? If, you, if you're if you from Hamburg, let me know in the comment section if you're from there. But if I was from Hamburg or like grew up in Hamburg, because when I was a kid, we used to always say in our city, let's meet at Barrel Man. Basically, there's, a, there's this statue of this man holding a barrel in the city that I'm from. I'm from Leeds. Google it. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be there. I might put it on the screen. But like, there's a, a guy, there's a barrel. He's holding a barrel and he's just a man. And it's just a, a, a structure. But anyways, I digress. Uh, this would definitely be somewhere I would say to my friends, oh, meet, meet me at the cathedral. Meet me at the cathedral. Because it's easy. Everyone can see it from everywhere in the city. So if you all just walk to there, you can meet up with your friends. It's such an easy meeting point. Yeah. As beautiful as the views I were mean, from the... I'm sure my age is before social media. Now you can just be like, yeah, can you meet me? <laughs> like, <laughs> can you meet me at this place? Top of St. Michael's Church. We wanted to find somewhere a little greener and a little roomier to end our day. And after Good. all, we've spent Green. basically the whole day exploring the city and everything it has to offer. So why not spend the sunset getting back to nature? Planten and Blommen, which translates literally exactly as plants and flowers, was... is the name of a huge park in the inner city of Hamburg, looking up at Hamburg's Perfect. This is exactly what I just said. I was like, I'm liking everything I'm seeing so far, but I just need to know there's a big park somewhere because it's very important. That's what cities need, a big, nice park to get away from the whole hustle and bustle of like city life. Okay, it's ticking a lot of boxes. A lot of my boxes, it's ticking. Um, yeah, it could, it could, it could, it might be better than Cologne because I just feel like there's a lot more to do so far. But anyways, let's continue. Conic Spire, the Heinrich Hertz oh. TV Tower. So our top tips for visiting Planten and Blommen do come in at the end of the day because it's really lovely. You've got a lovely view of the sunset and the TV tower. There's also a refreshment station, which we got here at oh. about four o'clock and it was still open so you can grab yourself a coffee or a cold drink or something like that to sit on one of the loads of benches they've got here and just take a breather take it in it's a really lovely little oasis in the middle of the city i've got to say highly recommended planton and blomen has everything from tranquil japanese gardens to water-like concerts Cute. and if you're visiting with the family kids will love the huge playground and the whole park is free to enter I love those uh, those trees, obviously well maintained, really, really nice. Um, it's definitely a city park because you can see cranes in the background and the Radisson Blue Hotel. So after a busy day and all that rushing about, it's been really lovely to come here to somewhere tranquil and quiet and enjoy the sunset. So we're going to go it's have a sit down green, and though. I'll see you tomorrow. There's not like a lot of grass or maybe they haven't showed all the grass. They need to show, uh, maybe they haven't shown the part properly. Hamburg's main attractions had already surpassed all of our expectations. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty. Now, we were excited about tomorrow and finding our own path. Oh. <laughs> that was the best, the best sound I could have asked for, I think. Pretty shot. They've got some really good. They get some really good uh, shots, don't they? When we woke up on day two, we were on a mission to see the best of Hamburg through the lens of Jake and Tom. 
our first quest for the best? Let's find the best view in all of Hamburg. Okay. Whoever we are. I thought they already found the best view in all of Hamburg. On the top of the, the cathedral. And wherever we looked, time and time again, one place came up as soon as we mentioned the views. And that was the Elbe Philharmony. That's a cool the Elbe Philharmony was completed in 2017. But thanks to it's a very striking shape picture. and central location, it's it almost looks like a wave. It looks like a wave. What a very interesting, but I've never seen a building that looks like that, so that's. I love that. It's already become one of Hamburg's most iconic buildings. Often referred to by its nickname, Elfie, the Elbe Philharmony is one of the largest and most acoustically advanced concert halls in the world. But you don't have to be a music lover to enjoy the views. The eighth floor is a viewing deck open for free to the general public and is known as the Plaza. So our top tips for the Plaza at Elbe Philharmony it is fully accessible. There's an elevator on the way up here and you can book your time slot in advance online as well. Now it's a two euro charge, but it does mean that you're not giving any queues and you're guaranteed a space. So that's what we did, just to make sure it was super hassle free. If you can tear yourself away from the balcony views long enough, the plaza also has a cafe, bar, and a coffee shop. It's the perfect way to start the day. Personal top tip, I'd recommend coming in the morning. We got here for 9 a.m. and the views are fantastic. We're really lucky that we came here with really great weather, but there's also nearly no one else here, and I've seen it incredibly busy. Getting up so bright and early was worth it to be able to see the city come to life. It had clearly nice. been a great choice to start the day with the best view in Hamburg, but now we were feeling a little indulgent, maybe even a little luxurious. And what better way is there to indulge luxuriously than with chocolate? Our next quest, find the best chocolate in all of Hamburg. In the heart. What's it with what's with chocolate and Germany? Are you guys not? Are you guys known for chocolate? I thought that was Belgium. I don't know, but maybe you guys have good chocolate. It's Lint. It's Lint German. I don't know. I don't know. We have pretty good chocolate as well, though. Cadbury's. I don't know if you guys have Cadbury's over there. It's good chocolate. Of Hamburg is a wonderful place. A chocolate museum called Choco Versum. Another one. Unfortunately, we weren't allowed to. F I'm not mad. I love chocolate, so you know, I'll go to a chocolate museum. Another one. I'm inside, but it was an absolutely fascinating experience. The 90-minute guided tour, which costs around 12 euros per person, explains every step of the chocolate production from bean to bar. And here's a pro tip for your visit: raw cocoa beans taste disgusting, but we'd recommend <laughs> trying them anyway. Although we'd been expecting to just gorge on chocolate, the Choco Versum was a fantastic surprise and was definitely quality over quantity. Okay, so the okay. Choco Versum wasn't exactly what we expected. It was actually really, really interesting. We really loved it. And you do actually get to make your own chocolate bar as well that you can take with you at the end. So we're going to try. I want to do that. Make your own chocolate bar. That's awesome. Those in a bit once we can find somewhere to get ourselves a coffee. Don't forget to grab yourself a souvenir from the shop, or even some gifts. They don't all have to make it back home. So nice. <laughs> they don't all have to make it back home, because they won't. Um, coffee, says something about coffee. What's coffee like in Germany? That's very important. I, I love coffee. I've become quite a coffee snob now. <laughs> I, used to, I used to not like drink coffee. I used to drink a lot of tea, because I'm British, and we drink a lot of tea, and I love tea. Uh, but tea's become a home drink, not become. It, Tea's always been a home drink, but coffee has become a outdoor drink. So if I go out, if I'm going and I'm in the city or I'm going somewhere, I'm walking, I go to the park or whatever, I'll go to a coffee shop and I have a coffee. So back to my question, what's coffee like in Germany? Do you have good coffee shops? Are you known for coffee? I need to know. Let me know in the comment section. We've had the best view of Hamburg. We found the best chocolate in Hamburg. And in that same kind of vein of indulgence, our next quest, the best hamburger in Hamburg. We've had a long day, we've worked up quite an appetite, and now as the sun goes down, we're gonna find somewhere to eat just a lot of hamburger. Everyone we asked in Hamburg told us we'd find the best burger at Dolph's Burgers. Dolph's Burgers. So we just got into Dolph's Burger. Is that true for everyone that's been to Hamburg, or you're from Hamburg, or you live in Hamburg? Is Dolph's Burger the best burger in Hamburg? Let me know, because I need to know, because it's going to go into my itinerary when I go there, so let me know. 
and there is actually already a 20 minute wait. So we've put our name down, got ourselves a drink, but they don't let you book tables either. So just do know that it's very popular. Got to be a good sign. Dolph started as a tiny burger stall in 2014, but their focus on innovative, handmade, sustainable burgers took the city's food scene by storm. Now they have two locations in Hamburg, but still pride themselves on their homemade style of hospitality. The food at Dolph's Burger is truly incredible. Everything is handmade from scratch by the team here at Dolph's. And it looks delicious. It looks delicious. I, I feel like with a burger though, you can't really go, go wrong. I think a burger business is a really clever business because, I mean, there's not many ingredients and you just need good, good, a good uh, ground beef, 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 chips, salad, bun, and you're done. Perfect. Like, it's, do you know what? I would, do you know what? That is one thing. If I were to start my own business, food business, Definitely, I would choose a, ham a food business, hamburgers. Because everyone loves hamburgers. I don't know a single person that doesn't like a hamburger. Even, a, even vegans like hamburgers. They just have a one with no meat. Hamburgers is, is just, yeah. I love a hamburger. The flavours that this food brings to the table are indescribable. This might be the best burgers I've ever had. Anywhere. Wow, he said this might be the best hamburger he's ever had anywhere. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. Okay. I need to try this burger then. If you're planning a visit to Hamburg, you have to include a visit to Dolph's. Trust us, you won't regret it. Of course, until it comes to walking back into central Hamburg and you realise how heavy you feel. <laughs> but despite how side-splittingly full we felt, exploring Hamburg's streets after the sunset gave us a chance not only to walk down our food, but to see the city from a new perspective. And we were ready to see what the night would bring. So we've covered the best view, the best chocolate, the best burger, and I'm absolutely stuffed. And our last quest is just to find the best place to chill out and have a beer. And yeah. where else would you do that than the Reaper Barn? The Reaper Barn is a street in the St. Pauli district, which is one of the centers of Hamburg's nightlife. Okay. The Reaper Barn's lined with restaurants, nightclubs, and bars. And as you can imagine, that means it's a central point for tourists too. You should expect to see a stag do or two if you visit. But an <laughs> I haven't seen a limousine in years. I don't know, I feel like people don't do limousines anymore, but... Night out <laughs> isn't the only reason tourists are drawn to the Reaper Barn. It's also the city's main red light district, and the clubs and bars... Naughty! <laughs> ...are interspersed with strip clubs, sex shops and brothels. Uh, Even if you're quite an inhibited wow. person, you'd be missing out if you didn't visit. The Reaper Barn is an assault on the senses. Bright, loud and colourful and it's a part of Hamburg's diverse history. So this trip to Hamburg okay. has been brilliant, right? It's somewhere you've got to add to your bucket list, whether you want to do the trip like a total tourist or whether you want to find your own way. It's just got something for everyone. It's brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely. This is what I'm, I'm beginning to understand. Just looking at how like lively and happening and like lit up the nightlife is, but then you have the quieter places to go and you have the parks and you have the canal ways and the waterways and you have that industrial vibe and that city vibe. Hmm. You have beautiful architecture. Hamburg is ticking a lot of like, you know, like a perfect, like happy medium city. That's what I get from Hamburg. Like a perfect, not too busy, not too crazy, not too quiet, not too bougie, not too fancy, just nice, like it's a nice city. I'd love to see what the outskirts are like with the, like, where the, you know, where people live, like the suburbs of Hamburg. I wonder, that, I wonder what they look like, because the city, that's, it, in England, a happy medium city is like Manchester, or Birmingham, or Leeds, where I'm from. Um, and this is like, this is on the bigger, bigger end of that. It's more like a 
between a Birmingham and a, and a Manchester in, in, in the UK. And I, and I really, really like it. I really like it. Hamburg might it might have moved to my number one actually. Actually, it's my number one. It is Cologne's number two. Hamburg's number one. Um, I'm gonna give Berlin and I'm gonna give Munich another chance because I haven't individually checked them out yet. So so far, I've checked out individually Cologne and Hamburg. Hamburg is number one. Cologne is number two. So let's see. Let's see what else happens. Yeah, we've had an equally fun time doing everything we've been told to do and then just doing the things we wanted to do on, to do on a whim. So add it to your bucket list. You're going to love it. Jake and Tom Absolutely. signing off. Have a good time in Hamburg, guys. They're, they're an interesting um, kind of like couple. I don't know if they're a couple like in a relationship couple, but like friends. They're interested because they're two different guys. <laughs> I, but I love their style of... Um, vlogging i really like them so yeah go check them out really good video and i am definitely going to hamburg and hamburg is my favorite german city so far all right i haven't said it's my favorite full stop i still have munich to check out berlin to check out and plenty more do you know what i mean plenty more cities in germany to check out so guys thank you very much for watching until the next one i will see you very soon